Today's video is a step-by-step how-to for building custom bifold doors. I'm going to show you exactly how we built them from assembly to installation. Step-by-step step how we made these doors. Don't forget to tune in to the end of this video where I'll show you all the measurements of the opening and the building plans we use to make our doors. Why custom doors? Well, because we wanted glass at the top and we needed wood at the bottom for kids and pets. This is Fred Jr. We call him Bubba. So as you can see, the doors are all finished now. Let's jump right into how you can make your own. All right, so to figure out the panels for the door and the measurements of the styles and the rails, uh, we created a storyboard and uh, we created the storyboard so that we could measure our doors. Um, this way we could figure out our overall height was going to be 79 inches and we needed to figure out what the bottom rail and the two center rails and the top rail, uh, what all that math was going to figure out to equal up to our 79 inches. So we created a storyboard for that. Um, and then we figured out that our rails were going to be two and three quarters and that our panel space would be 21 and 13 sixteenths. Sounds a little arbitrary, but that's what the math ended up being. Of the door. So the sides are called styles, the centers are called rails, and then these are panels. And we made our door with recessed panels. These are going to have glass and the bottom is going to have wood. All right, so we're going to use a sandwich construction. Uh, that's what we used when we made this. So when we build the, the, the next door, we'll show you how we built the sandwich construction. We laminated it with glue. We used that really strong glue and then we nailed it. All right, so let me explain this lap design a little better. Uh, we basically have an A door and a B door. So on the A door, the rail is between the styles, and then on the B door, it's the opposite. The rail is on top of the styles. This design, uh, this laminated design, makes for a very strong door that will prevent some warping over time. So this is one by six primed pine, and it's right around three quarter inches thick. This is really strong wood, it's pine, uh, and it's finger jointed. So they took a bunch of pieces and they uh, finger jointed them together to make these. The reason why we chose this was because the quality was a lot better than the regular pine. Regular pine we found uh, was bowed and twisted. We couldn't find enough to do the project. But the prime pine, we found quite a few pieces that were uh, just what we needed. Let's get started by ripping uh, the pieces that we need. So we're going to build the A door first, and then we'll build the B door. So we'll rip these on the table saw. All right, so we got two boards left. This is going to do the A, A door and the B door. We're going to rip the A styles two and three quarters, and then that'll leave enough for the B styles at two and a quarter. We're going to use the velt sander and we're going to take the primer off of one side of the A door and one side of the B door. That way when we glue them together, the glue will bond. And while we're at it, we're going to take the saw kerf from the blade off of the edge. So the belt sander uh, is the coarse and then on the mouse we have a little finer uh, grit. We'll hit it with this, we'll hit it with that. All right, so we've got them sanded on one side so we can glue them. This is gonna be the A door, and uh, we've gotta get these cut to length. All right, so we're gonna cut these off at 79. Well, I simply transferred the lines off of our storyboard onto the side styles for the door. So we've got the bottom rail, center rail, and the top rail. And I just used my square and I just transferred the lines right on. Our total width of our door to be 13 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to make my mark at 13 and 7 eighths, including my two styles. And then that's going to be the width of the bottom rail. And we'll cut the bottom rail. Checking our measurements, we're at 13 and 7 eighths. 
We'll go ahead and cut each rail the same way. These are the scraps from the pieces from the eight foot styles. We're gonna use them to cut our three rails. All right, so we're pulling measurements crisscrossed. We are 80 and 3 16 both directions, so we're square. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this and we're gonna pin it together with the air nailer so that the A door is complete. All right, we're gonna use some of this really strong Gorilla Glue. Get these in place. All right, that's really square. And we'll go ahead and get those pinned in. And we're just gonna toenail these together. All right, so we got it all clamped up, it's all glued. We got it tacked together. We're gonna to put this in the sun to dry and we're gonna start putting together the B door. Our B door bottom rail is gonna be a half inch more narrow than our A door bottom rail so that we can have a half inch recess for our uh, wood inlay. So we're gonna rip that, but let's go ahead and cut it for width first. Okay, so just like the A door, the B door is going to be 13 and 7 eighths. So we've got our two styles and our bottom rail, total width 13 and 7 eighths. I'm going to mark it and then we're going to cut it. And we'll do the other three rails the same way. The B door, we're going to build on top of the A door. The A doors had time to set and we're just going to build it right on top. We've got the sanded side going down. Uh, we're going to glue it, nail it, clamp it, glue it, nail it, clamp it. So each one of the B rails is already cut. We've cut them to width and then we're going to custom cut each piece of the style in place. We'll go ahead and get this bottom B rail glued, nailed and clamped. All right, let's get it clamped. All right, so we've got the style pieces cut to finish the door. Now we're just going to glue them, clamp them, nail them. All right, we continue to work up doing the styles, rail, styles, rail. It's the last one. We're going to glue it, clamp it, and nail it. All right, so that's got all four doors uh, roughed in, A side and B side. The bottom panels on all the doors is going to be this plywood. And then the top two panels on all four doors will be glass. And the glass panels will measure for, and we're gonna order them from a local glass shop. So we're gonna rip three strips, uh, nine and a half, and then we'll cut the, the height. To trim the bottom panel out, we're using glass stop. Uh, and we'll use the same glass stop to hold the glass in on the top panels. This is how we're trimming the pieces. We're cutting 45s on the glass stop. We've got uh, one last piece to cut here, and then we'll start nailing them in. I like to uh, put the difficult angle on first, which is the one where I'm cutting against my body. And then I like to mark in place instead of measuring. Shift over the 45. All right. And we'll go ahead and get these pinned in place and we're gonna glue it as well. All right, I got a little bead on the bottom. I'll put a bead on the top. Primarily, this will keep the panels from rattling. All right, so we're using half inch 16 gauge nails for the uh, window stop.
This is the last panel on the last door. All right, let's pin this last one in. All right. Last step is going to be to measure for the glass and we'll get the glass ordered. All right, our overall width for the doors is about a quarter inch too wide. So we're going to cut the left door a little shy of a quarter inch. And the way we're going to do that is we've set up a saw guide with this board that's really straight when we've measured it out with the saw so that we end up with a, a quarter inch and we've clamped it on there and we're just going to use this as a straight edge so that's a good tip for cutting the door all right so we're going to mount the the hardware on the door this is the hinge side the top of the hinge side is a spring-loaded uh, hinge pin on the bottom is the adjustable hinge pin it'll have this threaded insert that goes in there on the top and the center is a spring-loaded roller uh, and that's going to mount there now I've already measured it out uh, these are an inch and a quarter in the center so they're inch and a quarter in the center inch and a quarter in the center and the same on the bottom so let's drill some holes we've marked our depth uh, with a piece of tape all right we also use the center punch so that that will help start the drill bit so that's got all the holes so if you would have purchased doors this is where you would be you'd have uh, door panels with pre-drilled holes that you would install the hardware into so let's install our hardware. We're using a half inch wrench so that we don't actually hit the, uh, the hinge pin itself because we've broken them in the past. All right, that's the adjustable bottom hinge pin. And uh, that's got them all in there. So let's take it in and fit it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, door hardware that's mounted in the opening. We have the track with the adjustable hinge pin keepers and then in the bottom centered in our opening we have the bottom hardware and th this is what holds the hinge pin the adjustable hinge pin on the hinge side. Let's get the door fitted in there. Let's see how they fit. Oh yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about the hinges now. For the hinges, we used a surface mount. We're gonna paint them white. Let's talk about our hinge placement. So we're, we went six inches to the center. We also did the same on the bottom. We're six inches up. And then we just found the center of the door uh, and mounted the center hinge there. All right, the glass shop called and our glass was ready so we picked it up so today we're going to install the glass while we were waiting on the glass we painted the doors we went old school we used uh, latex semi-gloss we applied it with the roller and then we laid it out with the brush and so we've got them all painted we painted our uh, stop and we're cutting those pieces now after we get the doors installed we'll go around and touch up the paint all right so to install the glass We've set them all in their holes, so all eight panels are uh, fitted in their holes, and we're cutting the stop. So we have uh, two more pieces to cut. And I'm going to mark it in place. There we go. Very nice. And we'll get this piece cut. Same method. I'm gonna cut the difficult angle. It's the one that's away from my body. I'll repeat the process for this one. And I'm gonna mark it. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so that's the process that we used. We would cut one. Marry the next one, custom cut it, work our way around. And that's how we cut all the stops for all the windows.
All right, so let's install some glass. We're gonna move the stops, we're gonna lift the glass, and we're gonna put down some silicone, put the glass down on it, and then we'll attach the stops. We're gonna take some clear silicone. We've got the clear silicone. We're gonna put a few little dots. This is gonna keep the glass from, once it sets up, it'll keep it from uh, rattling around. Ooh. And we'll pin it in with the air nailer. Let's do another one. Get our glass dropped in. We'll pin them in place. And we'll work our way around the rest of the glass panels. And that's how we're gonna install them all. All right, that installs the doors. Might end up taking them down one more time. But the rough install, we're looking pretty good. Our gap's very consistent. The glass is installed. We're going to do some touch-up paint in place and then get them all cleaned up. Here are the doors all finished. Let's wrap up how we got here. The door opening that we had to work with was 55 and 7 eighths inches wide and 80 and a quarter inches tall. We made each of our door panels 13 and 7 eighths inches wide times four door panels is 55 and a half. Here's a tip. Bifold doors need to be a half inch more narrow than the opening in order for them to operate correctly. We ended up shaving a quarter inch off of this door to make our doors work right. All right, that wraps up today's video on how to make custom bifold doors. I hope that helps you to build your own, and I'm glad you watched, and I hope you watch again.